WGCI, the shy's number one for hip hop and R&B. It's the morning show with the Destin legend, Leon Rogers, yeah. the beautiful Kendra G, morning. myself, the shortest stand man in Chicago, Kyle. And as you can see right now, Chicago, we have a guest in the studio, been Love. holding it down for us for a very long time. <laughs> Tell them quality is in the building. <laughs> What's up, brother? Good, brother. Yeah, it's good to have you in the studio. It's been a minute. Yeah, yeah. this is new fancy studio. Yeah. yeah. Other things going on. Yes, I do. I honestly just want to see if we could jump right into the Chicago of it. You know oh, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. And everybody, we've been talking about it a lot. Genius has been on uh, Netflix, and the first thing I noticed when we watched Genius was how supportive you and most deaf were in the beginning of Kanye West's career. Mm -hmm. And then we know most recently he made those comments. Uh, about Drink not champs. liking your raps on Drink Champs with right. Nori and things of that nature. Right. So I just want to go back to, before we get to how you feel about what he said recently, talk a little bit about supporting him in the, in the beginning, in the early days. Well, definitely I want to shout out Kuti and Chike. Um, they did such an amazing job with that documentary and it was That's such true. a visionary thing for, for Kuti in particular to stop being a comedian and start focusing on the film work. And, you know, they came up and deservedly so, and they gave us this, this insight. And Genius is not just dope because it's about the iconic Kanye West is dope because it shows everybody in the scene at that time. Right. And what was interesting to me is that sometimes, well, often I, f I forget or I don't realize that not everybody has my viewpoint and my perspective yeah. and not everybody has those memories. And this was 20 years ago. So a lot of people don't even know. So sometimes in the way in which I've approached even how I felt about some of the things Kanye said and the way that some people I felt like people, I feel like sometimes people enable him and sometimes people don't really uh weren't really giving me and the backpack community that he was disparaging enough props i gotta remember that you know what those people just weren't there and the way that people responded after they saw genius it reminded me of that it reminded me because people was hitting me like i didn't know oh my god and this and that and i'm like how did y'all not know but i gotta remember they don't know they weren't there right. 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 one part sure. of that era right. right. for sure so, so picking up from that how did you feel when kanye made the comments about you on drink champs um I felt, at first, I felt hurt because this is a man that I know, this is a man I love. I felt hurt for about two or three minutes, and then I started getting in MC mode, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, well, if you're going to come from my bars, bars is fair game, bro. And I feel like ever since he came from my bars, he's been cursed. Mm. Because his bars, since he came from my bars, been straight basura. <laughs> straight Ooh. trash. That's trash. Ooh. Trash. And this is, this is from an iconic I artist right, yeah. that, with or without Ghost Riders, Kanye West has given us some amazing bars. So it's not like the man can't rap, but he's distracted by jealousy and hate. And he's distracted by pettiness and, you know, being upset at Kim and Pete or whatever's going on in his mind. When you create a music from a place of jealousy and hate, it's always going to be whack. So everything that he's doing lately, all his moves, all his decisions have been straight whack. Now, the reason why he said he don't like my bars is because... He was upset because I was always the person who was in his circle was checking him on that MAGA Donald Trump love and checking him on that Kanye, on that Candace Owens love. And um, it turns out I was correct about all that. He denounced Candace Owens after I checked him on it. He said, I don't rock with Donald Trump right before the Capitol riots. So he's upset at me. And he's, if, you, if you watch Drink Champs, he said, I don't like to read. Talib Kweli can read himself to death. Okay, if that's the insult, I'll take it. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. the reason why Kanye is saying all the ridiculous things he said is because he doesn't read enough. I think I think what hurts me about him more because Kanye is a very intelligent person. Yes. And I've always said before, like he 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 would get his point across better in speaking when he starts going on an attack, then you start looking at him like he's crazy. Let's talk about to your thing about having him not having enough coattail pullers in his camp. Mm -hmm. Is it because they scared they're gonna lose a check or is it they scared it it's because it might Kanye seems like the type that if you coattail pull him he cuts you off and he goes even deeper yeah I mean like, I can't speak for the people around him and he's got good people around him that I know and love from Don C to GLC to Malik Youssef good Chicago people yes. um, and you know and these men these are good friends to him they are very protective of him um, so I can't speak to why you know i can't speak to what's going on in that in right. that camp um you know it's very easy to protect your friend until he comes after you you know all those people goc don c all of them have come and gone in that camp and they brothers so they have little issues and they come back with me i don't have i love kanye west i love him even through the maggot thing even through the the blatant disrespect of me i love him 
I have a new song out with Nico is uh, Live at the Blue Note. I get at Kanye a little bit in my bars. I, like I said, bars is fair game, but it's all out of love. Like Kanye West, the reason why we talk about him so much is because he's given that much to the culture. He, he is that important. He's worth the discussion. Have y'all talked since the Drink Champs? Nah, not at all. Y'all haven't talked? Nah, not at all. Well, y'all need to talk. I mean, I'm open to a conversation, absolutely, but I ain't, I ain't finna chase that man around. Yeah, right, trying man. to kill Skeet right now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> one thing that um, one thing I didn't like about the comment in terms of when he was speaking on you on Drink Champs, because I felt like when Kanye came in the game, he was a bridge. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I don't. First of all, I don't like the backpacker connotation. I yeah. feel like that's like people calling Cube and them gangster rappers. Like mm -hmm. you never heard. Cube call himself a gangster rapper. Right, right. I've never heard people that are. But I have heard Kanye West call himself, call himself a backpacker, backpacker right. right? On my album. Right. So on on my eardrum album, he says only backpacker with a chip like hackers. Well, how? So you was posing as a backpacker, right. When you kicked that bar. But my point is that I felt like he was a bridge between worlds. Mm -hmm. He said I took um, Kwali, put him on tracks with Jay Z, yep. and I'm like, that's dope because I, I like both artists. No matter how many people look at them as being separate. And now, with these recent comments, it's almost like digging into that divide a little bit. Yeah. I didn't like that part about it. What were your thoughts on that? Just a backpacker, you know, whatever rap he's claiming to be in right now. We in an era where people celebrate fake and phony stuff. We in an era where people celebrate pettiness. And pettiness is not a virtue. Being a poser, being fake is not a virtue. We really have to examine a man who can get on a platform and fully admit, I was posing. As a backpack, I don't, you know, maybe this is some new sh new stuff, but I'm from the era where you didn't want to be a poser. And when you came across as a poser, people challenged you. And no one is challenging this man. And we we all as a society are enabling him. Um, me, I'm someone who has often stuck up for Kanye in times when the whole world was, was against him. And I stuck up for him because I felt like his art and what he's given to the culture was was worth it um i couldn't stick up for him behind the the trump stuff you know what i'm saying i just couldn't do it anymore and i feel like more people need to step it doesn't matter how is everybody still going to these concerts how's everybody I, like friends of mine how y'all still going to sunday service when this man is running around with joel osteen how y'all how y'all going to sunday service when he wear a maga hat and talk about uh the hat make him feel like superman how is he a Christian and he's coming at Pete Davidson this way and the mother of his children this way. What kind of Christian makes diss records about their kids? How are you dissing your kids on a record? Like these things I think if we're gonna talk about it and again, like I said, I'm not in that man's life to talk about his mental health, his his relationships with his family, but the things I just mentioned, he said these things in songs. So if you're gonna come from my bars, then let's address these bars. And you feel like that stuff that we, the audience, can control. I said that, too, because when he hollered, George Bush doesn't like black people, we was like, yay, 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 yay. Then he went to Mega Pat. Ooh, we hate him. Then he drops Donda. Yay, we back. And I, I right. kind of feel like um, we, as the audience, kind of, like, enable that. And like you said, if we stop going to the shows and be like, look, yeah, you got to calm down. Right. I have a reality check or we're not going to deal with you. He might calm down a little bit, but do you think it's too far gone? Because me personally, I don't look to celebrities for political advice. I know some people that are in the sphere, like if a Talib Kweli is talking about something, I, mm -hmm. you read, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I'm not looking, like some people, I just be like, do music. Yeah. That's all I look at you for, and that's it. I mean, I think it's important at this point in this conversation for me to acknowledge that I don't condone canceling, and I don't condone saying that we all have to share the same political views. The mistake Kanye makes is to say that because people criticized him for his support of Donald Trump, that that automatically makes us supportive of the Democratic Party. Right. I'm not a Democrat. Me neither. Um, he, right. he got at, he got at uh, Big Sean and John Legend in common because he was upset at their public supporting of the DNC and, and Hillary Clinton. I'm not someone who has publicly supported any con uh, 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 politician. I don't think people should hate on Common for who he chooses to support. I don't think people should hate on Kanye for who he chooses to support, but people have, have a right to make their, 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 their personal decisions. For me, again, the MAGA, Donald, Donald Trump, for me, Donald Trump is, I'm not gonna mince words here, he, Donald Trump is a straight up white supremacist, white supremacist terrorist. That's how I look at it. And I'm going to challenge any of my friends on that. Kanye West, 
will throw his hat in the political ring and say, support Donald Trump or say, support me for president, but also on the other side of his mouth say, I don't read. Also on this other side of his mouth saying, I don't pay attention to politics. I'm just going on feelings and emotions. Well, then you can't get my vote, bro. Right. You, can't, you, you, you can't say, I don't read, and you can't say slavery is a choice, and you can't say just uh, the Democrats started the, the KKK without giving the historical context of saying that the Democrats were conservatives back then, and today's conservatives are Republicans, and that's why today's KKK hates the, the Democrats. You are harming marginalized people when you are giving misinformation and, and uh, uh, pretending to be a political person but also saying, I don't read and I don't mess with politics. I want to challenge one thing you said, though, because I agree with a lot of things you're saying, the things that um, I didn't agree with that came out of Kanye West's mouth. But then you said, you know, we shouldn't support Sunday service. Mm -hmm. There's no per but, but there's no perfect Christian, right? You know, we have right. pastors that people go to that made mistakes in the past, and people still decide to go to those churches. Mm -hmm. So can you separate the two, even though you might not agree with some of his choices and his words. If you are a person that believes in a higher power, shouldn't you still have the right to support that part of him? I think you have the right to support anything. Um, for uh, Again, I'm not a Christian for the sake of discussion, but I am someone who has studied the Bible and studied Christianity. I grew up a Christian. Um, and I am someone who believes in living your life uh, in the path of Jesus, even though I don't identify as a Christian. So when I look at, well, what would Jesus do? Mm. That's, to me, the true essence of Christianity. Nice. And what Kanye's doing is grifting. That's not Christianity. What Kanye, what Kanye is not a pastor. He's not. Um, and so for me to give him the props or respect that I would give to a pastor, I can't do that. Gotcha. And when you're a Christian, but you got Marilyn Manson on stage with you, bro, I got to call out the hypocrisy. And it's not even about the devil worshiping or anything like that, because I'm not even someone who, I'm not even someone who, who would say, like, if you want to be a worshiper of Satan... You know what I'm saying? That's on you. You know, so I'm not I'm not judging that. But how are you gonna say you're a Christian, and then you like I got ma and you have Sunday service, and then next week check out my concert with Marilyn Manson? That don't make no sense. I got you. Let me switch gears, man, because I don't want it to be all about Kanye. Because you are doing some things I'm excited about. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, there's certain albums over the years of my life that have never left my rotation. You know how you listen to some albums, you put them away, you revisit them. Then there's albums that have never left rotation. And Black Star for me is one yeah. of those albums. I've thank never you, thank you, thank you. stopped listening to the Black Star album. If you come out recently and said you and Yasin Bey, aka Most Deaf, are coming back with another Black Star album. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about it, man. Yes. When is it coming out? When we going here? What's going on with that? Shout out to Madlib. Uh, Madlib produced. The Black Star album. One Kanye West on Drink Champ said the new Black Star, because I had played him this record a, almost a year ago. Okay. He said the new Black Star album is the best album he's heard since Dark Fantasy, mm. which is a strange thing to say about someone who you think can't, can't rap. Can't rap. <laughs> <laughs> but um, <laughs> shout out to Yasin Bey, and um, I'm very excited about it. It's been a long time coming. I can't exactly share the platform and the way in which we're going to deliver it, but it's going to be delivered. Um, it's definitely not going to be a... 200, I hope it ain't a $200 stem, because I'm not going to lie, brother. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a stem player. It's not going to be a stem player. Um, well, it might be, but... Uh, um, it's not going to be a Spotify. All right, okay. okay. Um, but it, it's coming. When, though? Is it going to be this year, for sure? I've, I I can confidently say by the summer. Good. I know you got to go. i got to oh, ask yeah, this I'm, question. I'm, I'm, I'm here to see y'all. Why do you think the rappers of your era can still bar for par, bar for bar make great music today because some of these guys out here I'm just like mm -hmm. I'm not gonna I won't be listening to their music 10 years from now well I mean I think great music great music is subjective yeah, okay. there are people in high school and college who are listening to young rappers that you and I don't understand or don't get but for them that's gonna be classic in, in 20 years from now they're gonna be like nothing beats Young whoop de whoop. Kodak Black like, right. like Gremlin is going to be a classic in TV. Yeah, this man calls himself a gremlin. <laughs> Not just any gremlin, a super gremlin. Jesus, I'm, I'm going to name my next album Regular Ass Gremlin. Right, right. <laughs> um, but I think that the era we come from, the focus is different. And I'm not mad at it, it's just different. The era we come from, the focus was on preserving hip hop culture, and the focus is on lyrics. And who are you? Are you sharing your actual experience? That's why we're so mad at ghostwriters. I jokingly made a, a joke, uh, uh, sending love to Kanye West ghostwriters. But I'm not even against ghostwriting. You know, I'm not. I don't. I don't have an issue with it. We come from the era where it's like, you have to keep it real, and the lyrics have to be. The lyrics are first and foremost. Um, now, 
the lyrics are secondary or even third or fourth. But you can't say you you can't holler, you can't lay claim to being the best MC if you got ghostwriters though. I think that's a fair argument. Okay. Yeah, 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 I think that's sure. a fair argument. Yeah. For sure. I do. Listen, I'm not gonna get in debate with you. Yeah. I'm not gonna get in debate with Tom. He won. Uh, he <laughs> represent. You could have been Juice's lawyer. Uh, hey man, I might have stood a chance. <laughs> <laughs> Look, man, uh, we always want you to feel welcome to come visit us when you're here in Chicago. Yeah, yeah. brother. You know, we appreciate you, man. Uh, we'll man. do another time. We'll spend a little bit more time. I appreciate y'all, and I appreciate Chicago, man. Yeah. And, and I appreciate, this is what I love about Chicago, is that, shout out to Kanye West. We all here have a lot of love for him, but I could come here and talk that real talk, and right. y'all allow that me to have that space and Chicago has shown me a lot of love. It always does, man. Make sure you follow him on Instagram. Talib Kweli is here in Chicago. We appreciate you, bro. Definitely looking forward to the thank album. Thank you, thank you, thank no you. Doubt.